Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We sh we sort through the digits of this Arizona real estate market. Before we get going, please smash that like button. YouTube likes it. I love it. Let's them put the video in front of more people. But anyway, what's going on? I'm going to talk about people that have tried and failed. What do I mean? They tried to list their home and it didn't work. Companies have tried to list their homes and it didn't work. I've got some interesting numbers to share with you. I'm going to start with the inventory. Obviously, it's climbing. It's climbing quite a bit in percentage. It's not really climbing. I mean, it's climbing about a thousand a week. And we'll be at 2019 levels here pretty quick. But it's climbing for two reasons. One, obviously, there's more listings coming on, but they're not being gobbled up at the rate they were. We were picking them up about 4,000 homes every seven days. Now, this week, 2,800. Now, it's a holiday week, so I get it's going to be lower. It'll creep back up a little bit. But the disparity between the homes coming on and the homes going under contract is growing every week. So who are these sellers? It's a mix. It's across the board. There's investors, Airbnbs, iBuyers, mom and pop, you putting your home on the market because you have to move, etc. But why are people sitting on their hands and waiting? Well, let's take a look here and let's take a look at this mortgage calculator. And what you see is that if you make $90,000, I didn't put in any monthly debt. And you got an interest rate of 3%, you can afford a $459,000 home. But all of a sudden, that rate went up to 5.5% now, you're down to $371,000. That's not what you wanted to buy, so you're waiting. You're waiting for prices to either level off and rates come back down again, or prices to drop and rates to get reasonable before you jump back in. Either way, you're not happy with where the market is right now, so you're just not gonna buy. You're gonna rent, you're paying more for your rent, it's painful, but if you can't afford the house that you want, you're just gonna wait, and I get it. Also be careful, you know, people that compare, well, 5.5 still a really good rate. Well, it is, but what's happened is affordability has really taken a hit. So that 5.5%, if we'd have had that back in 1981 when I was purchasing, I could have got a heck of a house because the affordability rate, how much can you afford versus your income? So how much of a house can you get versus your income? That's the ratio that's changed. Never mind these guys that go, back in my day, I paid nine and three quarters. Yeah, but the percentage of your house payment to your total income was within the guidelines. So total debt, 41%. Take your house payment, all your other bills, it's 41%. Whether it's an 11% rate or it's a 3% rate, it all depends on your income and the price of the house. So that's what we're facing right now, which is a huge affordability issue, especially here in the Valley. So we're hoping that we can see something shake out on this and hopefully it's not painful for anybody. But it, there's a clear sign out there for sellers. You better be reasonable in your prices. Now, the first number, number I'm going to share with you, I don't have a chart, but I track expired listings. And we average about 125 to 150 a week. And on the 30th, we had 150 expired listings. What's an expired listing? Well, you list your house with me and we get in, enter into a listing agreement that I'm going to have it on the market. I'm going to list it. I have a listing agreement with you for 60 days. Okay. At the end of that 60 days, if it doesn't sell, the listing expired. You just say, thanks, Rick. It was a fun ride. I'm out of here. Some people go find another agent, try it again. Some of them just leave the house off the market and wait another day. Well, from June 30th to July 1st, the number of expired listings went from 150 to 500. <laughs> Staggering number. What that means is there were a lot of people that had listings that were set to expire on July 1st, and they did, and the numbers spiked. So I got in and looked at some of the details. First thing that stuck out to me was, struck out to me, most of the listings were only on the market for 14 days. People now expect that house to be sold in a week, in a weekend, and that it's changed. It's, it's not the way it's going to be right now, so you have to let go of that. Didn't sell in 14 days, I'm out. I tried it, failed, I'm out, I'm gonna keep my house. The other interesting thing is 114 of those homes were the three day people. You know who I'm talking about, give us 15 minutes, we'll tell you what your house is worth. We'll put it on coming soon for the week and on the weekend we'll let people see it for two hours on Saturday. We will review all offers on Monday. Didn't work for 114 of those people. Those listings expired, they're done. 
That's a true telling number. It tells you that the market has really changed. And people have lost patience. We're used to putting our house in the market, getting multiple people in through the weekend and reviewing offers. And it's really hard to wrap your arms around the fact that that party is now over and it's going to take a while. The other thing that we're seeing is take a look at this. This is open door. 1,254 active listings and only 197 under contract. The graph completely flipped and went the other way. Offer pad looks the same way. They've got another 538 homes that are in shadow inventory that they're going to be putting on the market. And if they put those on the market, they will have a nine month supply of homes. Right now on our market, we have 1.4 months supply of homes. So those guys are gonna have to do something because you know what? That number that you saw, 1,254 homes, those don't expire. They have to sell them. If you were one of those homes, you would just say, I give up, I tried, tried to sell a home, I'm moving on. But these guys, they have to sell them. It's all over now. Yeah, it could be all over now. I don't think so. But they have to sell these homes. They're going to have to reduce the prices. And when will they do it? Hey, if you've got a real estate agent that you're working with right now, um, make sure he's got them on your radar so that you can see what's going on. Because they're going to be forced to do something. They're not going to hang on to them and keep them as rentals because they don't want to be a property management company. They want to be able to buy, fix them up, put them back on the market. So they don't want to be a property management company. Will they package them together and sell them to investors? I'm sure they'll sell a few of them to investors that want to use as, as rentals. Now they, as a rule, have been very backed up. Their listing agents have more than they can handle. So they don't answer the phone right away. They're really busy. They don't have enough listing agents versus the products that they have on the market. So be patient with that. It's going to take some take some time but the other number that jumped out is this our contract ratio is down to 60 this is actually a better leading indicator than the CMI sometimes it reacts faster CMI Cromford market index lags about two weeks this is pretty current 60 puts us in a balanced market we thought we'd be in a balanced market by August guess what we'll be there next week it says right here, the contract ratio is telling us we're already in a balanced market. If it drops below 30, then it will indicate a cold market with significant surplus of sellers over buyers. We have not experienced a market like that since April of 2009. So if you're looking for more homes that are available to you, this is coming up right now. Sellers, um, people will be asking you to contribute for some closing costs. Uh, they're not going to give you offers uh, where they're waving it. Uh, inspections anymore and they're not going to put in any appraisal gap language now there are some neighborhoods and some price points where some of that is still going on in fact if i go and look on my closings over list price here um, you can see and this lags a little bit too we're down to 38 percent of the homes are going over list price that number used to be as high as 60 64 percent again things are changing my question on inventory is this. Maybe you can let me know in the comments below. How high will inventory go? Because right now, you've got people listing their homes. A, they're just trying to test the market, see if they can get some equity. B, they're moving, they have to list their homes. Or C, it's investors, iBuyers, and Airbnbs that are investors just trying to go ahead and capture some profit, get the equity out, do something else with their money. Are we going to reach a point where that all shakes out, but the average owner-occupied home is going to sit still because they're sitting in a below 4% mortgage? So they're only going to sell if they've lost their job or they have to move. I think they're going to sit on their houses. So as we creep above 15000 and 20000 are we going to hit a ceiling? There's a lot of chatter that that may happen. So that's the number I really want to watch. We slowed down this week. We were going... 900 new listings, 1,000 more new listings, 800. But 4th of July weekend. Let's watch that number closely, shall we? Have a great 4th of July.